Okay, so in your two of your chemistry exams, you'll be given the periodic table of elements. So this is the version that um, AQA will give you. <clears throat> and the first thing you need to do, probably in the first five minutes, is to annotate as much of this periodic table as possible. Make it as useful as you possibly can. So first thing I would do is draw in the stairs. So starting just above aluminium and just following the stairs all the way down, separates the metals and the non-metals. Okay, this then shows us that these elements on this side are non-metal. Okay, so none of them are metals. They can be different solids, liquids, gases. They might be different powders, but none of them will be metal. The rest of these elements, the vast majority of them, are metals. Okay, so that just that little kind of ladder here, little stairs, just allow you to realise which side is which. We also have that to kind of look at this middle section. Now this middle section are called the transition metals. Now these metals, when burnt, will be very different colours in their uses and their um, ionic compounds can be different. So for example, iron can be iron 2, could be iron 3, they are not set as the other groups in the periodic table. So speaking of groups, the groups are the downs, okay, are our columns. They are the groups. Okay, and our periods are across, as why it's called the periodic table. Okay, so these are our periods. What you also can add in is a number your periods, okay? So we're gonna do one all the way down to seven and this will tell us how many shells these atoms all have so anything in this first period has one shell anything in this second period has two anything in this third has three and so on so anything in the bottom of the period table are the bigger larger elements that have up to where well, i can have seven shells our group number this number here will tell us how many electrons they have on their outer shell so for example, everything in group one has one electron on its outside shell. It also, when it becomes an ion, is a plus one charge because it'll lose that one electron. With the group two, they become plus two charges because they lose their two outer electrons. Three become plus three charge. Four are the different one in the middle. We'll leave that one separate. Group five become three minus charge because they want to gain three electrons to make this up to eight this becomes a two negative charge and this then becomes a one plus one negative sorry charge this group here the noble gases have a zero at the top of their group meaning they have totally full shells okay so this group has total full shells meaning every single electron they have is on a shell full so it's either two two eight 288 they are all full shells the main groups that you're going to have to know about are these group zero these noble gases these inert gases that are unreactive group one which is our alkali metals they get more reactive as you go down if you imagine the shells get larger and larger so that little one electron cannot be held by that electrostatic attraction of the nucleus and group seven which get more reactive as you go up the group because they want to gain one electron to fool their outer shell. So it's much easier for fluorine to drag in one than it is, say, something like astatine. Okay, this is the kind of thing you should be annotating on your periodic table in the first few minutes of your exam.